nursery, which you see actually after this door. Okay, so from the, this is the part where we go into the field and collect. Right now we have, um, I mean, there's so many little trees, literally there's millions of, of young trees. And it makes the seed collection really easy. They're only this high. You can imagine what it would be like trying to get them from a big tree. And you have to actually beat the mice to the tree to get the seeds because they actually live on the sand of the sea. In fact, it's about the only thing they eat up here. So rodents actually, they, they decimate really. When it was the wild population and we didn't have the trees that we have now, we had to band the trees. At some trees you'll see a little metal band around them. That was so that we could collect seeds and protect that tree from the, the rodents eating them. Um, since then, our theory was we were going to plant whatever it took to put, bring the forest back. Um, but since then, we've, we've planted about 30,000 trees by hand and rock drill from seed, germinated there where you water them and do all of this. And what we found out is when we started to test for oil, we would pull out the root balls to make oil out of because that's where the, the, the best uh, santalum was coming from the lower part of the tree. So we pulled out the root ball and the, the roots grew and it, like profusely. Like now, we've got millions of trees. We planted 30,000 by hand. We had 300,000 more to, to tube as we were tubing on the re-sprout. And then we just gave up, said, you know what? Tubing is not gonna work. There's not enough hands. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna control the ungulate population. No cows and sheep, which we took out in 2006. We started to manage the, the sheep population. And, and that way we could control how many were being grazed. So all of the trees, one of the favorite foods actually of the grazing animals is the sandalwood tree and the koa tree. So this is, these large trees you see around here, all koa, that big skeleton, it's like a witch tree. It's actually like a dead koa or dying. It's got a few live branches on it yet. These, um, this tree right here is a, is a, a mamani. This is a native tree, M-A. M A N E. Yeah, these little trees in here are koa trees under the under the big koa, and then the other ones you see in the field, all the yellow tip ones, those are actually sandalwood trees, and this ridge is, is covered with them. Now, sandalwood trees out in the, in the wild, there's actually one right behind you. This one, it's coming in the paper, you can't see them, but. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, you know, we can do the talking of the tent too. I just want to kind of cover what we're gonna do, like right now. One thing for sure is you should um, be careful walking. Don't assume there's even ground there if you see grass. So small steps, be ready to fall on every one. And if you start falling, go with the flow. <laughs> go slow, don't resist, just go down slow. <laughs> and hopefully fall towards the grass. <laughs> um, and actually it will happen, uh, so be careful. And if, and if you've got um, a leg, ankle or anything, just stay on the flat where there's no risk at all because there's branches, there's holes in the ground, there's lava tubes, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, so the seeds, we're gonna pick the ones that are either purple, red, or dried. So if it's green, you leave it. Otherwise, you can pick off you know, the other ones. There's actually, some, some clumps are just dried, like huge clumps, you can just strip the whole thing. Don't worry about dropping them. There's all over the ground, there's millions of them anyway. We just wanna get enough that we can actually regenerate. The nursery is now used more for um, helping other properties that don't have the tree population that we have, which is everybody, because nobody has the tree population we have. Um, this is the densest paniculatum forest, you know, actually in the world, simply because paniculatum only exists on this island. Not just in Hawaii, only on this island. So there's five species, and this one is, is unique to this island. It's unique because it's the highest growing, highest elevation sandalwood in the world. It grows the fastest. It's got super good um, santalols, which is where the oil value comes from. The santalol is actually created from that um, the struggling tree. So the santalol that, that keeps the tree alive is actually the same thing that humans use for their own health and, and longevity. What's the acreage of this farm? 2,800. Yeah, yeah. and the entire thing has been done. So there's baby trees on the entire 2,800. It's not just a little experiment. We went with mass protocol. Um, there's been a lot of experiments, but if it didn't apply to the whole, we weren't gonna be the contribution we wanted to be. We wanna be a contribution to the whole, then we're gonna do it you know, in a big way. And actually, less the less um, violation that there is at first, we did it by helicopter for a year and a half. We plucked logs by helicopter so we wouldn't disturb the ground. Uh -huh. And now that, that theory was, was actually less inducive to the, to the, um, the ecosystem because when we scarified the land with the excavator, not only did the seeds that were in the ground regenerate because of the grass, this grass is non-native. We have no non-native trees, but this grass dominates the property and the seeds were never made to regenerate in, in a shaded area. Uh -huh. So they would not regenerate on their own. Yeah. Not just a sandwich, any huh. seed. So the regeneration, that's why you see less and less and less um, large trees. 
In fact, this property is the only one you'll see with little trees like this in pasture. Because when the, cow, the cattle rotation doesn't allow for a tree to get big enough to be safe from the cattle. So what you have is older, more distressed trees dying um, all the time. So the regeneration that you see here is simply because we took out the cows and horses, extracting the root ball, left the, the, the mother tree gone, disease free, and then independent uh, root sprouts, the, the roots, the established roots from the old tree were already hosted. Symbiotic tree needs to have a host so a sandalwood tree can't grow alone. So because the tree was already hosting, it could support the, the sprouts really easily. So that's what you see actually growing all over the place. And it's not just true of the sandalwood, it's true of the koa too, obviously. Um, so the regeneration that we see is like, it's literally unprecedented. And it's not something that, you know, it's actually was happening already in nature. We're just facilitating the process and putting a protocol to it that took, took away a, the grass you know, inhibition, really, <coughs> of just killing everything. And then it would dry up in a dry time. It's a little dry right now, actually. And then the, the fire will come through, and that's just the worst. Because you only got, you got so little organic accumulation on this lava field. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of years, and we lucky to get an inch in a low spot. Yeah. When a fire comes through, it doesn't just burn the grass. It burns the soil itself, changes the pH, doesn't hold moisture. So as the fires come through, you see less and less, you know, surviving. This has burned a couple of times. Um, we have 160 acres just over the hill that burned while we were actually in escrow. And that's, so we're actually looking at doing like a farm project over there. Gary's talking about the grinder because he's done it in other places where you can actually, can you look at this? How would you farm this? <laughs> Not with the hand, I'm sure. Um, so, but there are machines that could crush and break and we can take trees and, and reforest an area that would actually really wouldn't. So that's a pretty actually cool project. That would be really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it would take a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. The value wouldn't come to, oh, we're dead and gone, you know, because it takes, you know, 20, 30 years before a tree would have the age to really be struggling enough to actually produce santalol. Okay. So a healthy tree doesn't have, you know, as much santalol because it's not struggling yet. Yeah. The trees that we, that we have here were actually selected as, the selection has nothing to do with commercial value at all. It has to do with the health of the tree. If the tree is more than 50% dead and it's not going to get better, then we remove the tree, we make oil. The roots are still alive, they regenerate. If you wait till the tree dies, you get oil and you don't have regeneration. So that's really kind of something, it's like a, most people are thinking taking out a tree, removing roots are bad. And I'm going, not in this case. This is, that, that, this is actually life. It's the wow. future. And if you don't do it, it's gone. And it's happened already on half a million acres on this island. So this is the only one that really is, it's happening. Um, we've got an experiment next door with the neighbors. They got 200 acres, they are excited because they, it's been a year almost and they've got young trees everywhere. Now you can imagine, they, they have 30,000 acres next door. They're looking over the Stonewall boundary. There's thousands of trees and not one on their side. Mm. None. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> you know? So eventually he said, let's try this 200 acres. And it's, it's, you know, we won't have a chance to go see it today, but it, they are very excited. And it's an education program, Kamehameha Schools. The kids are doing counts. They actually count in one acre plots, a radius of an acre, they'll count every dead and living plant, and they do that every so many months as a part of the research that goes behind it. But it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I think, um, so be careful 